Father in heaven, we are standing in your presence, our heart full of gratitude, Lord, for protecting us and especially giving us another opportunity that we could meet our brethren and discuss and study your word, O oh Lord. And thank you very much for Pastor Dan who is teaching to us and you have constantly and continually, Lord, all throughout uh, these 18 months you have spoken to us through him and the discussions were been uh, spiritually helpful and helped us to grow. Lord, as we are going to spend uh, an hour in your presence, again this time, Lord, I pray for your spirit's leading and guidance. We want to hear your voice, O oh Lord, and speak to us what we require in our personal spiritual walk as we are discussing about spiritual disciplines. Thank you very much for li uh, listening to us, Lord. May the words of our hearts, um, I mean, may the words of our mouths and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome again for to those of you who have just joined in. Uh, today, I just announced that our uh, of course, our, we will continue to speak on uh, or study spiritual discipline, but the discipline today is submission. And I'm presuming that, you know, we wouldn't have really uh, looked at submission to be a spiritual discipline, but uh, the Bible does mention uh, submission. And uh, what I plan to do is just talk a little bit about, you know, uh, the uh, how it is viewed today and then uh, uh, we will uh, take out some scriptures that specifically mention submission and maybe have a look at it from the context of, why, of what it is uh, uh, where it is placed and how we can understand it uh, we do want to look at uh, I mean when we talk about submission Christ becomes a very powerful example Christ uh, the incarnated Christ. So we will uh, do a little study on that scripture in the book of Philippians. And uh, I will end with a quotation from Richard Foster, who once again is one of those who writes on these subjects. Uh, hopefully that will lend itself to some discussion. But before that, I do, would want some personal reflections from you. Uh, before we do that, um, like I mentioned, you know, Submission is one of those disciplines. Uh, not only, you know, we may not think of it, but it is so out of touch with this culture we live in, the world we live in. I mean, when we talk about submission, you only th think about, you know, weakness or, uh, you know, being a loser. Uh, you know, uh, submission is only those who are uh, not strong enough. So, it doesn't resonate with the world we live in. The culture that we live in seem to, you know, uh, not necessarily recognize this need for submission. Uh, in our culture, and I'm presuming it's all over the world, in any culture in the world, to dominate seems to be the, uh, the in thing, right? Uh, a submission is last on one's mind, right? Uh, to dominate, to control. The fact that, you know, we think we deserve uh, and uh, we cannot deny ourselves anything, that we deserve whatever we are, you know, wanting to look at, focus at. Self-denial is once again spoken of only in soft tones, uh, in, uh, you know, in uh, mostly in very close religious circles, but self-denial on a regular basis on a uh, on on a as a discipline you know that we follow every single day is something that you know the culture doesn't recognize uh, we live the, we live in this instant world we just can't wait for anything uh, we can't submit to somebody else you know taking uh, uh, going ahead of us we want to be ahead of him and uh, I must confess that sometimes I do get annoyed when I'm driving on the road and somebody tries to overtake me and I, I get, you know, press the gas pedal a little 
faster so that I can, you know, deny him the opportunity to overtake. But, you know, that's, uh, uh, it's so natural uh, that, you know, that we do these things. Uh, so all of these things, I'm presuming, makes it difficult for us to submit. Submission is not something that comes naturally, right? Uh, and we also, in our culture, we talk about rights, you know, uh, we, uh, you know, of course, we talk about human rights, but individual rights. We want to insist on individual rights. We never ever want to give up any right as such. Um, we don't necessarily think in terms of the larger good of the society, in terms of you know, the, the, big, the big discussion today is the environment. Uh, I think recently there was a lot of discussion on environment and, uh, you know, uh, no country wants to be the first to say, okay, we are going to, you know, completely phase out uh, fossil fuels or, uh, or adapt to certain new ways of doing things so that we protect the planet. Uh, everybody's waiting for somebody else, you know, to do it. So uh, it's an ongoing struggle. So anyway, so that brief introduction to submission and the difficulties that we face in submitting the natural tendency to be to dominate and to control. Uh, let's move into what you think about it. What is your thoughts on it? Uh, do you like to submit? Does submission come naturally to you? How do you feel when you have to submit? Right? Um, uh, do you like to give up control? What are your thoughts on it? So uh, let me just get some, some feedback after that. I will, uh, you know, touch on a few points. Okay, so as usual, who is going to go first? Yeah, Suramurthy, yes. Thank you, Suramurthy. You are one of those, uh, uh, you know, regular ones to go first. Go ahead, Suramurthy. It is not inbuilt in our, in our human mind to submit. Mm -hmm. It, is a, the practice of submission comes over a period of time, in my case, over 40 years, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. Very true, isn't it? I mean, uh, yeah, it doesn't come naturally. Uh, you really have to focus on saying, you know, I mean, uh, I have to deny myself. And denying the self is always very difficult. Right? What about the others? Any, any thoughts you'd like to share? Uh, uh, how do you feel when you submit? Do you feel like a loser? You know, do you feel like as though, uh, you know, you've, uh, you know, you've been the weak one out, right? Is there any strength in submission? What do you think? Yeah. Can I share a few thoughts? Yeah, Praveen, go ahead. Yeah, uh, as Surya Murthy said, definitely submission is not default. Uh, we don't get it by default, but definitely our culture and our the bringing up, you know, the way we brought up uh, the nurture, it helps. Us, especially, uh, we see the difference in uh, our sorry in uh, east and west as well as cities and villages. We can find the difference uh, in the families itself, and so it's, it's such a huge thing and. Uh, which has been uh, very greatly, uh, which we are struggling very badly to submit at the same time, which has been used very much to abuse and uh, misuse people, both in families, marriages, as well as in churches. So it is uh, such a, uh, you know, the, presently now we to ask uh, uh, young people to submit themselves uh, to the church authorities also is becoming difficult and a lot of young people are struggling to take because of uh, the kind of abuses they have seen uh, and uh, they speak about those matters and so it is uh, such an it is a word that has been used to control people uh, in the families especially uh, the women and then of uh, children and uh, in churches whatever is happening uh, that is so unfortunate and heartbreaking for us to see. At the same time, submission has such a great uh, uh, strength. Uh, for Sometimes submission is really very good and helpful. 
uh, being under somebody is uh, a really great help for us to grow. Uh, but we need to recognize, and it is not an easy uh, process as well to submit ourselves to some leadership. But at the same time, we we learn a lot and we grow a lot. And uh, uh, for me, I can really feel and see that submission is a, a great anchor now for for me to grow for, uh, grow and move forward in the kind of roles that have been uh, uh, set in front of me. And so it is It is a very huge thing. It spreads into everything. And ultimately, one thing we can say that submission is an act of love. It is not uh, an obligation to take or a command we have. So it is an imperative that we have to do. But uh, mostly it works only when it is an act of love. Yes, I think I like that last part. Uh, it's a, the fact that submission is so uh, clearly tied to uh, love. Uh, I don't think many people see it that way. Uh, that's very unfortunate. Uh, you know, they don't look at love being, you know, being submissive. Any other thoughts? Yes, buddy, buddy go ahead. Uh, the Bible uh, calls us to submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. And uh, what uh, Praveen and you mentioned, uh, it's an act of love. Mm. And uh, it has God's blessings. And as he says, we can grow in that, uh, you know, uh, uh, by doing that. And uh, 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 it, is, it is a blessing from God. Something, uh, you know, that uh, can uh, uh, avoid, avoid uh, you know, some uh, uh, avoid problems, so to speak, there is, there is a principle in that. There is God blesses that when we submit to one another in love and in the fear of the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Bertie. That, that, that uh, particular uh, phrase that you mentioned, of course, is mentioned in the scriptures. And uh, I think that's one of the hallmarks of uh, the Christian faith, you know, where the act of submission is very powerfully mentioned. Yes. Yes, Franklin, go ahead. Uh, even okay, am I can you hear me, sir? Yes. Yes. Sir. So even from a secular standpoint, uh, uh, submission is a fundamental point, sir, for smooth functioning of a family, organization, or a country. Imagine, sir, if uh, citizens don't submit uh, to the laws of the land, uh, what will what will be the uh, outcome? Yeah. That is number one. And then I have one question for for Praveen, sir. Praveen spoke about there are cases of abuses, sir. Does that demolish the very principle of submission? So since uh, Franklin addressed uh, the question, uh, definitely not. I don't mean uh, uh, some, these abuses that are taking place, they demolish the importance of submission. Uh, but it, it, uh, it always challenges us to uh to use this to have this in a proper say a pop, proper perspective uh one thing i would like to say people who don't understand the value of submission uh they only demand submission nobody can uh, demand submission we have to earn earn people's submission by our love and our action and our attitude which we have i mean i'm talking especially in uh, in the context of the church uh, where you cannot just simply come and demand people to submit themselves. But we have seen so many cases uh, because of demanding uh, for submission. When we could not set a good example for submission, and I don't think our next generation would like to submit themselves to us. And let me tell one single statement. Uh, many men are here in this, uh, in this meeting. Uh, I just heard this from somebody, so I'm telling you. Uh, your preacher said, uh, his Bible says, husband submits, you submit yourselves to your wives. And most of the men could not take this word. And they said, where, where, nowhere it is written, husband submit yourselves to your wives. But it is written in the scripture, which uh, Bertie reminded us, submit yourself to one another. I am one, the other person is my wife. So you know, we men also we find it difficult to uh take it so submission is something even to demand i personally feel 
to ask somebody to submit themselves to us it is not an easy thing especially when we are in a relational setup like church and all uh we need a lot of courage and uh, we need we should have such a courage and confidence about our uh, the kind of example we said before them to ask somebody to submit themselves to us it is because the days are like that the abuses uh the word has been i mean it has people have been abused so much that way so definitely not i'm not saying uh, uh, abuses diminish the value and importance of submission yeah okay uh yes bertie go ahead uh, uh can you unmute yourself uh, bertie yeah uh, praveen good you cleared that uh you know <laughs> that's why that's why uh, what's the name mr poppins asked you the question <laughs> it is a it is good in the eyes of the lord uh, that's why it's given to submit yourselves one to another in the fear of the lord submit yourselves in the, uh, to one another in love Uh, don't diminish it. Don't diminish the uh, this thing. It is a truth, and it is a blessing. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Uh, is it Rekha Anil? Go ahead. <laughs> Me. <laughs> you know, uh, as you uh, mentioned in the beginning, submission is some is people view it as weakness and and has a negative connotation. But if we consider it in the light of humility you know yeah. submission is a form of humility and if we consider it that way it becomes more acceptable to us so you know if we are humble people if we exercise humility that just as good as a submission yeah yes yes uh, very true yes uh, rekha go ahead yes uh, here we uh, give too much importance to the first amendment right everything is a first amendment which freedom means of freedom of speech all the time but uh, the bible very clearly says in corinthians that uh, when paul said when i am weak then i am strong because if we submit to god then everything is in place otherwise there's chaos as mr popin said so uh, we really have to understand that there are sometimes we do have to submit and sometimes we have to see what uh, what the law says about it one single uh, point i would like to share that is all we we humans always we like to be sovereign we like to have complete control over everything but the reality is by default we are not meant for that and we are not prepared to be sovereign we cannot handle one if we are becoming if we become sovereign we cannot handle that's where the the submission is something uh, comes for our rescue uh, either it is in a small group leadership or family leadership or church leadership and uh, come ultimately we humans we have to submit to god unless we submit ourselves to god we may we, we will not be able to manage the earth he are given to us so we always desire and strive for uh, this uh sovereignty but we are not able to handle it so that's where the submission is a great <laughs> yes okay well yeah very interesting thoughts sir uh... you know tying up submission with humility of course earlier with love and then of course i don't know if it was franklin or pravin who indicted all the men saying they are they are a gender who find it difficult for submission uh so anyway some interesting thoughts there any other before yes bertie go ahead in fact where to resist somebody and bible says submit to god resist the devil <laughs> resist the devil and even right. flee from you there is somebody we do have to resist and uh, and just the opposite of that is god says submit to me right so there is a, there is a blessing god's word says that and we should uphold it yes it's very not, true it's not a sign of weakness it is not a sign of weakness as uh, as mr popin said god has set order and uh, and god says it is for our own good pravin also uh, said that if we are you know we think we know you know we are all in all uh, <laughs> then you know that's the that's uh, uh, we get into ourselves into trouble right yes so river the did you have a thought yes it is not a question of submission all the time 
there are times when we have to resist or fight. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, it depends on circumstances, situations. But uh, uh, anyway, I think those are all very interesting thoughts. Uh, let's uh, let me just share with you what uh, I have in my notes, and then uh, we will. Uh, I'm not sure if Mrs. Noah is wanting to say something. Uh, 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 we'll just wait for Ms. Noah to share some. I, once again, I'm not very sure. Is yeah, somebody? Has, uh, right. I Mrs. Noah, did you want to share something? Yes, I think so. Go ahead. No, have, Mrs. Noah, please go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're not sure if Mrs. No is wanting to share. I'm not sure. I think she wants to share something. <laughs> or, or the mic is not able to uh, catch her words. Uh, Jesus Christ himself submitted to the Father and showed us the way we should do likewise. That is what the most important thing yeah. in the world. We should submit ourselves to God and to one another. Right. Yes. Uh, thank you for that. I mean, that's that's one of the scriptures we will uh, refer to today. And of course, like I said earlier, Christ's example of submission is just amazing. Uh, hopefully, we will we will come to that. But thank you for sharing that uh, thought with us. But you know, just let me uh, you know just look at some misconceptions with regards to submission. Uh, sometimes we might think that submission is only uh, reserved for married couples, you know, or submission takes place only in a in a marital situation, and submission is not to be discussed anywhere else. Of course, we may go to the extent of saying children must submit to their parents. So that is. Uh, probably a misconception sometimes people might have. Also, another misconception is that people, I mean, submission is only looked at as though uh, people of lesser rank or lesser status should submit. Uh, people of a higher status or a higher position, uh, sh you know, should not submit. Uh, that is another one of those, you know, misconceptions. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, and then there is another thought maybe worth mentioning. Submission sometimes is manipulated, misused by some, getting others to submit and then uh, manipulating them to control them. That is perhaps uh, something that happens in our you know, in our uh, society so very much. And we can see that taking place in history, over the histories, uh, you know, the manipulation of the concept of submission is, uh, you know, misused. Okay, obviously from a Christian view, now obviously we are going into, let's go into some scriptures. From the Christian view, uh, submission first and foremost is voluntary. Right, uh, it's supposed to be voluntary, and uh, the submission is to God, to Christ, and to others in authority. The Christian view specifically mentions people in authority and the need for submission to those in authority. And like uh, many of you pointed out, submission to one another. So, so for, from a Christian perspective, we can see that. Uh, submission is supposed to be voluntary, the way the Christian perspective is. Uh, it is to God and to those in authority and, and certainly to one another. Let me go through some scriptures I'll read and then uh, uh, we'll pick up some thoughts from there, how submission is, uh, you know, uh, taught in the Bible. 
James chapter 4 and verse 7 says, submit yourself then to God. I think it is Bertie who mentioned the scripture. Submit yourselves then to God. And of course, it goes on to talk about resisting the devil uh, who would flee from you. But here, submission is used in the context of God. So obviously, uh, you know, I mean, uh, every, a lot of people would agree to that, but not the atheists. I mean, they, they, they don't act. They don't uh, believe in God. And of course, they would, some of the militant atheists would go to the extent of saying that, uh, you know, submitting to a, to a harsh God, and they paint God as being very harsh, obviously, uh, they will not agree. But here, the Apostle James reminds us submission, obviously, is God, to God. Also, in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, picking up in verse 13, I think it is. 1 Peter 2 verse 13, it says, Submit yourselves to the Lord for the, for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Right? So here, uh, the need for recognizing human authority is biblical. Uh, and it goes on to say, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. From the context of this scripture, submission is being spoken of as uh, submitting to authority. And it, interestingly enough, it says for the Lord's sake. In other words, the Lord himself confirms the need for submission. Franklin mentioned about the need. Submission brings order in society. And, and, I, and I'm sure God, we worship a God of order, not of confusion. Uh, so he would want that we submit. Uh, and so we do it for the Lord's sake or in the name of the Lord. Uh, in other words, in that respect, they are also submitting to God as we submit to human authority. Let me read you uh, Romans chapter 13. Uh, Romans chapter 13, reading in verse 1, it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Once again, it's a repeat of what uh, Peter says. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. So we have another dimension that is added to what Peter says. Peter says to do it in the name of the Lord. Uh, and uh, here the Paul who writes Romans uh, says, uh, you know, the ultimate authority is God. So every authority that exists is either expressly allowed by God or placed by God. So uh, submission then is an act of obedience. When you see it from God's perspective, from the biblical perspective, submission is an act of obedience, of course. Uh, and obedience is ultimately to be voluntary, isn't it? Our, our obedience must come voluntarily. It must not be forced. If it is forced, then... Uh, it violates the very concept of love. So these are perhaps thoughts that uh, we can take away from these scriptures. Let me uh, read you uh, same book, Romans chapter 8 now. And in verse 7, it says, The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Here, Another, I mean, we already discussed this, that it doesn't come naturally. And I think the Bible confirms it. It says submission doesn't come naturally. Why? Because the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God and it does not submit to God. So the hostility to God prevents us from the submission. And so obviously the reference there is, or at least the encouragement there is, don't be governed by the flesh or the fleshly mind. Be governed by the Holy Spirit, you know. So, uh, uh, and another uh, thought that is added here is, uh, it does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. So, uh, the fact that we find it so difficult to submit is because uh, there is a natural resistance in a fleshly mind to submission. And once again, the Bible brings these thoughts quite clearly. Ephesians 5 and verse 21, well, once again mentioned by many of you, 
submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. And of course, if you look at Ephesians 5, uh, it goes on to talk about submission in the church and then submission within husband and wife, right? Uh, from 2022 20, onwards, it talks about husband and wife. So the submission to one another is definitely mentioned, in, you know, is, is a requirement in the church. Then in other words, where we don't, uh, we don't have dominating relationships, we don't have abusive relationships. And, and I specifically want to focus on that abusive relationships. Uh, one that does not submit, uh, one that is forced for, in, in submission is abusive. And we have abusive situations in the church, unfortunately, coming from, you know, uh, leadership that does, do not understand the servant leadership of Jesus Christ, right? I mean, just recently, was it, uh, I'm not sure which country, was it uh, France? where we had, you know, the clergy uh, abusing little children. And uh, what a, sh what a, I mean, uh, it is just beyond explanation. I mean, uh, imagining that such, such a thing will take place. But that is abusive relationships, forcing somebody to submit because of the position you have. And that, that is so very unfortunate. But here, very clearly, there is a submission to one another, right? And uh, that is something that I think from a Christian perspective, we need to hold dear, all right? So there are many more scriptures. Obviously, we don't have time to look at that. I just picked up some uh, few that might just bring, uh, uh, you know, a context to what we are discussing. I want to move to uh, the, the, the scripture in Philippians and specifically talk about Jesus Christ's submission. I think it was Mrs. Noah who mentioned how Christ submits to the Father. But uh, there are some interesting thoughts there. Uh, let's look at that. Obviously, Jesus Christ demonstrates the greatest form of submission. And there is a, and there is a reason why we would like to say it or term it that way, right? Uh, for example, his death on the cross. I mean, what, what, I mean, can we imagine the kind of submission that he voluntarily gave himself to that? Let's read um, Philippians chapter 2, pick up some interesting thoughts there. Here, I think I'm reading from verse 3. He says, uh, the apostle says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourselves. Uh, in verse 4, it says, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests uh, of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. If you, look, if you notice verses 3, 4, and 5, so powerfully talks about actually the concept of submission. And it's all in the con context of submission. But let me finish it and then we'll, we'll go back to uh, just uh, highlighting some very important thoughts. Verse 6 says, who being in the very nature of God, talking about Jesus, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human kindness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. I'll stop there. That, that you know, passage, uh, I mean, is, uh, you know, there is so much we can glean from that. But uh, just going back to, uh, to verse 3, do nothing on a selfish ambition or vain conceit. Right. Once again, uh, submission uh, comes out of not being selfish. If you do not submit, you are being selfish, right? And conceited, because the Bible indicates submission is self-denial. But if you don't allow that self-denial to play out in your life, there it is selfishness, right? And uh, one of you mentioned about humility. 
and submission is very, very much, uh, you know, coupled with a attitude of humility. It says, rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Now, that doesn't mean to say you should put yourself down and become a doormat. What it is saying is you recognize the value that others have. Uh, and you sometimes recognize the giftings others have as better than what you might have. That doesn't mean to reduce you or reduce your status or your value in the eyes of God. Right? But why should we do this? Why would we want to value others about uh, ourselves? Because it says not looking to your own interests, but also the interests of others. This helps us to focus on interests of others. If you're only self-focused, then you're selfish. That's where the whole concept of submission is so very important. You submit to, you know, an attitude where you recognize others as valuable and you uh, celebrate their giftings and sometimes celebrate in such a way where you recognize that they are, in one sense, more than you above yourselves, all right? Then it comes to Christ, you know? In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset of Christ Jesus. Wow, I mean, the mindset of Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God or something to be used to his own advantage. He didn't want to cling on to his position of, you know, Godhead. <laughs> uh, he was willing to, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, submit himself and can you imagine where it says he made himself to take the nature of a servant and I think this past Sunday we discussed that about uh, how God you know became a servant for us and in Christ in the incarnation that is so very powerfully demonstrated in Jesus Christ right by being made in the in human likeness and now look at the important thing here and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross, right? Uh, when it says he humbled himself and allowed himself to be crucified, you know, he was in one sense submitting to humans. I mean, here is God Almighty actually submitting to humans. I mean, look at I mean, we talk about some people feel, you know, oh, you, I'm on a, such a position that I cannot submit to anybody. But here Jesus Christ demonstrates how, you know, uh, that he does not have to hold on to his power of being God and omnipotence of God. But he submits himself to be crucified, to be beaten, uh, to be spat upon uh, and, uh, you know, and... Uh, allowed himself to be abused by human beings, the very humans he created, <laughs> the very humans he gives the very breath of life, he allowed himself to submit. So that, that kind of submission is godly. It only comes from God. That's why it says human beings, you know, Paul says, it's not natural for us to submit. That kind of submission only comes from God. So if I can just... Uh, you know, sum up that, you know, the cross uh, has become a symbol of submission. That is why, you know, I mean, uh, those of us who uh, recognize or uh, talk about the cross, uh, it seemed to be a symbol and it's a worldwide accepted symbol of submission. Now, some might look at it as a symbol of weakness and a lot of people have said it. But for us, from a Christian perspective, here is the most powerful being in the, you know, in reality, in the cosmos, submitting himself to sinful human beings. So the cross has become a symbol of submission. Some people like to say the cross, I mean, to say submission is also a form of freedom. And, I, and we will discuss that, maybe get some of your thoughts on that a little later. So we are now told, looking at what we have just read about Jesus Christ, have the same mindset as Christ, you know, right? Um, position 
should not stop us from submission. Position should not make us to abuse others, making them to submit. So these are powerful thoughts that come from, you know, the example of Jesus Christ. Let me just uh, add a few more thoughts and then I will uh, read you that, that uh, quotation. Um, perhaps it needs to be mentioned that Christian submission, the way we look at it from the scriptures, does not, you know, make us lose our identity. Just because we are submitting does not, you know, take away our identity as a child of God. Uh, now, some might want to take advantage of our submission. That's a different matter. But under no circumstance, our identity is lost. Jesus Christ did not lose his identity as, you know, the second person of the Trinity, as the son of God, as God himself, just because he submitted. So that is one thought that perhaps uh, need uh, to be mentioned. Submission is not about hating ourselves, right? It doesn't. You don't submit just because, you know, you, 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 you hate yourself. It does not make you lose self-esteem or self-respect, right? Some people are made to submit and made to compromise on self-respect, but not Christian submission. Christian submission, like one of you said, is actually a, an act of love as well as it's powerful. It's an act of, uh, uh, how, how to put it? Uh, no, uh, it's an act of power. It's not weakness, right? I mean, maybe you can uh, use some other words for that. So, um, finally, uh, the need for submission from a Christian perspective, submission is about our recognition that we need God, especially submission to God. We are showing that we are completely dependent on God who is the very being of the universe. I mean, uh, we have our being in him. Submission is actually a realistic evaluation of our abilities, especially when we look at from the other perspective, others' perspective. We are acknowledging, when we submit, we are acknowledging others who have perhaps sometimes uh, gifting that may be better, superior to others. So the, uh, submission is acknowledging that. And uh, submission is also a willingness to serve. If Jesus Christ didn't submit himself, he wouldn't be serving. He wouldn't have become a servant. But he became a servant for us because he submitted, right? And that, of course, you could say is also a sense of, a, I mean to say, a, a perspective of hum, humility. Um, and if we don't submit, obviously, we are demonstrating no respect for one another. And certainly to not res no respect for authority. When we are told submit to one another, that means if we don't, we are not, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are not demonstrating respect for one another and for authority. Unfortunately, this attitude of wanting to dominate and control increases conflict, right? And it damages relationships when uh, relationships are dominated rather than, you know, respect to be part of the relational, you know, dynamic, right? So, and like I mentioned a little earlier, this discipline of submission brings actually a sense of freedom. It's, a, it, it's something that entails or results in freedom. And maybe you can share some thoughts about that. How does submission become an act or rather submission bring a sense of freedom? Right. Let me end by uh, sharing my screen. I let me see. Yes, I want to share with you a quotation from Richard Foster. Uh, and uh, let me just make it this a little larger. OK, I hope you can see this on your screen. Uh, this is a quotation from Richard Foster about submission, and I'll read it for you. It says the touchstone for the Christian understanding of submission is Jesus' astonishing statement, if you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. This call of Jesus to self-denial 
is simply a way of coming to understand that we do not have to have our own way. It has nothing to do with self-contempt or self-hatred. It does not mean the loss of our identity or our individuality. It means quite simply the freedom to give way to others, the freedom to give way to others. It means to hold the interests of others above our own. It means freedom from self-pity and self-absorption. So there you have some thoughts about freedom, all right? Uh, I hope uh, uh, you were able to catch some thoughts there. Uh, I'll just stop sharing there. Okay, so that is what I would like to, just wanted to share with you on the subject of submission. So uh, I'll open it up for some comments. And if you specifically want to say something about how submission, you know, to God, to one another, actually, um, uh, you know, uh, engenders freedom. Some people think submission is servitude, servile. But no, it actually brings freedom. Do you want to throw some light on that? Or if you'd like to share any other thoughts from what we already discussed, feel free to do so. Okay. All right. Yes, buddy, go ahead. Do, do unmute, unmute yourself. In the uh, Holy Scriptures, it's mentioned in the letters that made free, made free from sin and become slaves of righteousness, are fruited unto holiness, and in the end, eternal life. Uh, when we, God has made us free from sin, okay, by his death on the cross and paying the penalty and bringing us into himself. It is the nature of God that is at work in us. It is uh, the right thing to do. And uh, uh, we should all recognize it and, and wholly give it, uh, you know, uh, give it uh, the importance due to it and uh, be blessed in our relationship with God by knowing this fact. Okay. Perhaps it's what you read from slaves of righteousness. Okay. Perhaps what you're, what you're saying, uh, Bertie, is that uh, when you submit to God, uh, yes. that is, you know, actually, uh, what you say, uh, gives us the freedom. Right? Yes, yes. Brings us the freedom, submission to God. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. Sorry, Murthy, go ahead. The concept of submission, we can apply it to ourselves. Only, I am thinking of the civil disobedience movement. Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. So, uh, had he been just submitting, submitting, uh, we would not have got the freedom. <laughs> so, what you're saying is that uh, there is a time we should not submit. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Yes, yes. Right. I would, uh, I don't know, I wish you probably expanded on that. Maybe what you're trying to say is we don't submit to oppression. We don't submit to uh, sinful behaviors, sinful ways of doing things. Uh, you know, we don't submit to abuse. You know, I mean, on many occasions in, in counseling situations, I have told uh, wives who are beaten by their husbands, I said, you don't need to submit to that kind of behavior from the husband. Uh, so yes, maybe uh, that is, that is, I think, uh, I would say scriptural. I mean, uh, Jesus says, if you're going to be persecuted in one town, shake the dust off your feet and move on to the next. In other words, he says, don't submit to persecution that way. Uh, am I, am I making sense? Sorry, Murthy, is that, uh, yes, is that how you? Correct. <laughs> okay. Right. Franklin, you had a thought. Yes, go ahead, Frank. Sir, sir can you please repeat your sentence sir, regarding uh, persecution? When, when Christians were persecuted, what did Jesus say? Move to the other place? 
I, 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 I'm not quoting the scripture exactly, uh, but I remember him saying that if you're per persecuted in one town, okay. uh, you know, in other words, uh, don't, you, you are not expected to sit and take persecution unless, of course, it is inevitable. But uh, move on so that you don't have to submit to that kind of behavior from others. Okay. Sir, sir uh, Romans 13, chapter 1 to 4, no, sir. Uh, talking of uh, uh, Paul wrote this, sir, uh, when there was dictatorial governments and Paul is urging his uh, well, believers to submit to the dictatorial authorities. Your comments, sir? Or oh, submit to dictator. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Romans 13 1 says, let everyone be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. Uh, Rome was obviously, uh, you know, you could say dictatorial. Uh, and uh, to that extent, uh, you know, the Bible also says, or uh, isn't it Paul himself who says to, uh, who was the slave? Uh, Philemon, wasn't it? Uh, was Philemon? No, no, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, Onesim. Onesim. Onesius. Yes. Uh, he says he did not, uh, you know, he did not tell him to, uh, to uh, move away from slavery. I mean, a lot of, there is a lot of criticism about that or a lot of debate about that. But yes, you know, uh, that is the human situation, condition he is in. And to that extent, maybe the submission is so that he does not get abused, right? But governing authorities, I mean, if you go to governing authorities, I mean, we, we live in a particular country. You can't keep changing countries, can you, Frank? <laughs> uh, you, if you live in a country where it is oppressive, what can you do? I mean, uh, you do the best you can to, to suffer through it. Right? Am I making sense, Frank? Or uh, you have sir, to add, add a thought? Yeah. Sir, my point is, sir, it is difficult to submit to a dictatorial authority. Uh, sir, please, sir, please see verses three and four. Yeah, please read it. I don't have it with me right sir, away. Uh, sir, Romans chapter thirteen. Yeah. Uh, sir, Romans, uh, Romans chapter thirteen, two to four. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against God, and what God has, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but to those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear? Of what of the authority? Uh, my understanding of that, Franklin, is that uh, uh, Paul here is making a statement with regards to God's ultimate authority. And if God has allowed a dictatorial, you know, an oppressive government to stay, uh, I mean, obviously, we don't know why. We might not be able to answer that question, but he has for some reason. And if we are you know, subjects in that particular situation. Uh, God, I mean, to say Paul would want that we try our best to be subject to that. That's how, but he is actually, uh, what do you say, uh, acknowledging finally the authority of God. I mean, are you trying to say that you, sh I mean, it is, it is wrong to submit to dictatorial authority? I don't know exactly what your question is. <laughs> Please, I wanted your comments. I wanted your comments. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts to add there? Yes. Oh, Anil, go ahead. Anil, go ahead. After that, Bertie. Mr. Franklin wants to say, Mr. Franklin wants to say, submit under all circumstances. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that is, that is probably what I understand. Yeah. Okay. Anil, go ahead. No, even there in Romans, Paul says that, the, that all governments are established by God. So even if they are dictatorial governments, you know, the laws that they uh, establish, I mean, their laws won't say kill one another or, or you know, steal and all that. that it might be a little oppressive, but you still are under obligation to obey those laws as long as it does not conflict with God's laws. All right. So, I mean, uh, somewhere Peter says, should we not follow God instead of men? So in that respect, yes, all authority one has to obey, even if we don't like it, as long as it's not contradictory to God's uh, commandments. Right. I that's, think, yeah, that's, that's a, a, yeah, that's a good point, Anil. Uh, you know, the apostles, many of them were a martyr. 
because they preached the gospel which was against the rules in 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 that land and they had to pay with their lives so in that respect you know they were willing to even sacrifice their lives but you had a thought you know i would go along with what uh, anil said and what you have said mr zakar i go along with that yes okay okay thank you right does that bring some light to uh, franklin or does it help i think what surya murthy said also is uh, is is uh, is a good state that in a, any circumstance all circumstances you learn to submit right now if you are under oppressive uh you know situations and if you can extricate yourself free yourself by all means do so go to another country sir <laughs> <laughs> it yes. is an extension of the statement it is an extension of the statement go the extra mile yeah, yeah. correct yes franklin go ahead sir now sir uh, i want to throw two specific questions question number 1 in our contemporary world there is one country which does not grant equality to the female gender what should a christian in this particular nation do the second question sir the second question Oh. sir in the restructuring of our country there is one faction that does not submit to ecclesiastical authority your comments <laughs> <laughs> you are are you trying to get me to trouble franklin <laughs> yeah <laughs> sir <It seems>, uh, <laughs> no sir uh, sir i have not named anybody no sir i have not named countries i have not named <laughs> factions, uh, it is sir. very clear which country you are referring to <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> sir. But is it factually correct, sir? Are my questions factually? Well, the, I think the, Surya Murthy has to answer to your question. Go ahead, Surya Murthy. The biblical instructions for Christian followers. It, it does not say how a country should be run, how we should modify the other countries' rules. <laughs> so I think that is not a, yeah of importance. It's not relevant now. Yes. Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about a country that does not uh, value uh, the female gender, are are you specifically referring to female gender, Franklin? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sorry. I mean, so what, the... what do you do? I mean, there are several countries. In fact, I would say many countries, most countries, <laughs> do have discriminatory rules against, uh, you know, Women. gender, gender specific. So, uh, what do you do? I mean. Uh, uh for example i mean uh, I, i i no let me not bring up you know some full, uh, <laughs> superfluous examples but but uh, in a situation like that for example um, in some countries females are not allowed to go to school uh what do you do i mean if you're going to be killed, huh if you're going to be killed for that i mean uh, is your life more important or is your education more important anil you had a thought yeah i was just going to say i wonder which country that is <laughs> may i share for a couple of th thoughts uh yes praveen and i think david wants to say something go ahead go ahead da praveen when it comes to gender equality or uh, so, uh, some other areas where there is uh, abuse taking place and uh, forceful submissions are taking place uh, we always don't need to look at these things as a uh, a uh, rejection of god's law or in this sense the entire humanity is in a journey from centuries to centuries as we are passing by as we are uh, go move, growing for growing and moving forward our entire humanity is learning certain things once upon a time we did not treat women equally the whatever the nations are e treating women equally today we are not treating previously or oh, and those nations are accepted now so god is working in this world and people are changing people are learning and uh, so we have to accept that and we have to wait until the lord there are certain things which are in our control where we can uh, on those we can make uh, we can make comments there are certain things where we don't have any control like uh, this kind of situation perhaps there we are we as a christian our response should be looking unto the lord where uh, he can uh, interfere or 
intervene and change the situation every every society is changing that is uh, that that's a truth that's the truth and nobody can deny it even the countries you are uh, referring that, that that is about that and regarding uh, church what you have mentioned and jesus christ uh, jesus has already sorry apostle paul has already given example if somebody is not submitting take another member and go and speak like if somebody commits in then leadership can go and speak and if uh, no no they are not still submitting and accepting the correction then leave the person into the control of god yeah. so that that is something we can do in the church so we cannot force anyone to submit no you have to submit to us and so on so all the rules and all so as the pastor said and all submission has to be voluntary yeah. especially when it comes to church we need to look for voluntary submission whatever forceful submissions we take they are not going to uh, remain for long they are going to remain and uh, it's going to create more issues than uh, it is better not to have them instead of having them uh, and have facing money and i mean more issues yeah good point uh, pravin good point i would say that it's only in voluntary submission you experience freedom right i don't think you can experience freedom you know when it is forced uh, uh, forced con- uh, submission is not that all right i think uh, that was a, a good discussion thank you very much for your thoughts and uh, uh sharing your comments uh time is up <laughs> and so let's go ahead and close uh, today's uh, session then and uh, david since you were the last to uh, you know bring the question can you please close in prayer for us thank you our gracious heavenly father lord thank you lord for this uh, wonderful day thank you for the gathering lord in the zoom land and thank you for the uh, pastor and uh, all uh, uh, the congregational people lord we we have come together to uh, sh- uh, share the topic and uh, yes lord humility uh, in you is so cru- crucial lord and to be done voluntarily lord master lord we need to not to forget that you first loved us so we are just learning to emulate your love and yes lord we fall short in so many areas and uh, yes father humility is one of the areas where uh, we need to grow to so that we will be able to submit to the uh, uh, authorities which you have ordained at the same time lord uh, grant us the wisdom to uh, uh, surrender to the authorities according to your will and also do what is pleasing in your sight father lord we thank you father lord for this wonderful time and we pray lord that whatever was the message was shared and the understandings were shared lord we pray that uh, it will edify us and also be able to be used in our personal lives lord help us to be a practical christian in word not only in words but in action lord in jesus mighty name i pray amen amen, amen. thank you god bless you all have a good rest of the day